Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Miguel Sanchez. I am co-founder of Metabronx. And I'm Philip Shearer, also co-founder of Metabronx. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to uh, Lowen Stein Sandler uh, attending this uh, advisory roundtable for the Metabronx Winter 2020 Startup Cohort in partnership with Village Capital. And so, big thank you to Lowenstein Sandler for hosting us. Uh, Kristen Taylor is here. She's been instrumental in getting Metabronx off the ground. Uh, but also uh, Marie DeFalco, uh, Tahira Muhammad, who uh, has put together the event, Chris Rossi, who some of you met earlier, and Marianne Schulman. Um, so the structure of this is going to, we're going to do three parts. Uh, it's going to be about 45 minutes. Uh, first, uh, everybody's going to introduce themselves, so get a feel for uh, who's here. Uh, then uh, we're going to review the program a little bit, notably uh, Village, Village Capital, uh, and, and, and then we're going to get feedback from uh, all the advisors. So uh, as I think everybody here knows, uh, Metabronx uh, is a startup accelerator and entrepreneurship education program. So we really do two things. We work with founders who uh, are, are from uh, places and demographics that uh, lack the access to the resources, the knowledge, and especially the capital uh, to make their big ideas into reality. So a good example of such a place is the Bronx, our home. Um, and then in terms of demographics, women, people of color, people in low-income communities, and general, generally overlooked places, which is also something that Village Capital emphasizes. So in other words, like not the two coasts. Um, and then the other thing we do is uh, provide internships to youth, uh, predominantly from uh, low-income communities and predominantly from the Bronx. And so a number of these uh, youth, a couple of these youth are, are, are here today. Uh, and we place them in a, in a context of, of an environment of innovation and entrepreneurship uh, where they learn every aspect of building a 21st century company. Um, so the first step, uh, uh, as, as, as I was saying, uh, is, is introductions. There are three groups here. Uh, still around the table as well as online, we have uh, advisors, so advisory board members. Then we have some startup founders. We call it the Founders Council of the Advisory Board. Uh, so there are uh, four of them, startups have gone through the program already, uh, and then some uh, students, as I was saying, who have also participated uh, in the program. And uh, it's actually the youth component of this, the, the educational component, that, that uh, uh, determine how we constituted the advisory board. Most accelerators, uh, you know, finance, of course, investors, legal, engineering and marketing and we've added a, another uh, group which is education so people from the education sector uh, this is actually a, a key component of, of village capital uh, being interested in metal bronx was this this bridge between uh, uh, professional entrepreneurs and and youth um, so in terms of introductions uh, we're gonna i guess we go around the table first uh, then online um, and then startups, and finally students. Uh, oh, that's entirely the wrong slide here. Uh, and so if you could just say uh, your name and your company, as well as a uh, quick professional background. So those, those are categories we've put together, finance, legal, engineering, marketing, and education. If, you're, if you do a combination of both, then you can say that as well. So uh, start with... Um, yeah, John, a great place to start. Hi, John, John Mannion, Bronx Academy for Software Engineering, high school teacher, work-based learning coordinator. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm passing to my I, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Maggie. I work with an organization called the Bronx Cooperative Development Initiative, and I lead our program around technology and innovation with a focus on hardware technology. Um, <laughs> my background is actually in city planning, so I come to this work with an economic development perspective, 
Um, and I'm very interested in worker-owned cooperatives and other forms of shared ownership. So real quick, on, on, online, can everybody hear us well? Yeah? Okay, great. Sorry. Francisco. Uh, Francisco Lugovinia. I've uh, been a lifelong member of the Bronx, of both re reciting and in my business. I've been an entrepreneur, uh, specialized in, in housing and in workforce development. And uh, at the tender age of eight decades and three quarters, um, I'm having a lot of fun. Good evening. I'm Richard Zayas. My vocation is uh, as a lawyer. I serve um, what we would call emerging markets, domestic emerging markets, a business lawyer, nonprofit lawyer. Um, since I also have a passion for teaching and I've done so at various levels on a variety of subject matter, I would also uh, characterize myself as being bivocational. Thank you. My name is Yuli Martinez. I have a, a law office in the Bronx focused on um, regulatory, nonprofit, regulatory compliance, governance, policy procedures. Am I next? Okay. <laughs> Sorry to walk in late. I was stuck on Perfect the phone. time. <laughs> Marie DeFalco. Uh, I am an investment management partner here at Lowenstein Sandler. We're happy to host everyone. Very happy to work with the group and with Philip. Um, my practice is primarily fund formation, but a lot of venture fund formation. So I do work with startups uh, quite a bit, if, if only indirectly. I work very closely with our tech group. The tech group does a lot of uh, portfolio company work. Um, Kristen Taylor, I'm a tax attorney here at Lowenstein Sandler. Um, I've done quite a bit of work with um, Metabronx and uh, you know, generally my practice covers everything from nonprofits to tech startups and investment fund formation and management. So uh, very excited to be here, very excited to have you guys here. Um, my name is Richard Seat. Uh, I run my own family office. Um, I got my family office because I was a former uh, general partner of the Carlisle Group. Uh, I joined Carlisle when I was a startup, and I was the chairman of Asia for Carlisle, created the entire operations for Asia. Um, several things that are probably worthwhile is I'm campaign finance chairman for a man named Francisco Moya, who is a pretty well-known uh, politician uh, here in New York. We work together. Not surprised. Uh, that's one. <laughs> And two, I used to be a professor at Harvard Business School. That actually means anything. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lauren Brown. I'm a director of development for Family Life Academy Charter Schools Network. We're opening our fourth school next year. Um, we serve K-8 through in South Bronx. Um, prior to that, I worked for the Charter School Network downtown, um, doing training around development, grant writing for charter schools. So I've been in education for a while with regard to the development piece. And prior to this, I was living in uh, D.C. and I uh, basically did uh, nonprofit fundraising for various organizations, arts, arts education, education as well, before coming to New York. Good evening. My name is Bruce Lincoln. I'm the co-founder and the chief technology officer of Silicon Harlem. We're focused on transforming Harlem into a hub for tech and innovation. So we have a particular focus on affordable broadband as a driver for economic development, as well as digital literacy. We just recently had our sixth annual Next Gen Tech Conference in Harlem, where we attract over 300 people looking at what are the issues that we need to confront and get our um, hands around as we move into the fourth industrial revolution. And I'm a fan of Philip and Miguel's and a big supporter. I'm really glad to be here. Okay, uh, so online, it's uh, your turn. I guess uh, we'll call out your names. We'll do it alphabetically. Charlie Summers. We can hear you. Awesome. Uh, hey everybody, my name is Charlie Summers. Uh, I've been uh, a friend of Metabronx since 2015 uh, when I was building startups around the Bronx. Uh, since then, I'm actually. Uh, so hi from California. Uh, I've spent the last two and a half years uh, working as a software engineer at LinkedIn. Uh, and recently I left to join about a 40 person startup called Merit. Uh, have to rep the t-shirt. Uh, 
And yeah, I'm really excited to be involved uh, and happy to help out with all of your technology needs. DJ, your turn. That's me. All right. Uh, can you guys hear me? All right. <laughs> Thumbs ups all around. Uh, so my name is DJ Carey. Uh, I've known Miguel for, God, well over a decade now in the uh, marketing space, doing a lot of uh, animation, motion graphics, special effects. Uh, I'm out in San Francisco now. I've been here for about eight years. Uh, helped a lot of product companies uh, in terms of the experience of their products themselves. Right now, I'm cr uh, Chief Creative Officer of Firewood, which just got uh, merged with Mr. Capital. Uh, we're the largest marketing agency in San Francisco. So it's been a wild ride so far. Uh, we've got a lot of great things going out in San Francisco. And Miguel and I, and, and recently in the last year or so, have been connecting with Philip around just the opportunities that we're all here, you know, I think representing and how we can actually do something about it. So I'm just glad to be a part of uh, what you guys are putting together here. So uh, willing to lend, uh, you know, my opportunity to make a few friends in the process. Okay. Hi everyone. Someone. I wonder. Sorry, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah. Everyone who's not talking should mute. Yeah. Anyone not talking, please mute. I think we're getting feedback from one of you. We're not sure who. I think but it's. You can go, Emily. Barbara. Maybe Barbara. Yeah. Maybe you can mute Barbara. Am I okay? Great. Love the thumbs up. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emily Edwards. I am a product manager at Village Capital. I oversee um, internal and external programs for Village Capital, which means I do a little bit of everything from building curriculum to making sure applications are going out on time, to making sure that um, the entrepreneurs we work with are getting connected with the right mentors and the right investors. So I've been really excited to build on this for the past four years at Village Capital. Uh, previously, background in uh, financial consulting, particularly for LPs and their uh, private investment portfolios. So I've gone really uh, kind of run the gamut from the most far, the furthest removed from the entrepreneurs to the most in the weeds. So um, I will talk much more about Village Capital in a minute, but really, really excited to join, join from Washington, DC. Barbara. Barbara, Barbara, I guess. Barbara, you... You're there? Yep. Yes, I, yes, I'm here. I'm actually in my home in Sag Harbor, so I'm roughly dressed, so that's why I'm um, I'm a serial oh, very entrepreneur. Very good, very good. <laughs> um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I spend all my time helping others to do that, particularly uh, women in underserved communities. Um, I'm entrepreneur in residence at Columbia Business School and University, and I'm also entrepreneur in residence at Hofstra. Um, I founded the Columbia Harlem Partnership for Columbia University, and I've also st founded a program um, called Ascend Long Island, which teaches entrepreneurship in underserved communities out here. Um, I've also done some programs for the New York City Economic Development Corp., so I'm passionately interested in helping women get their fair share of the political and economic pie every day and passionately involved, uh, interested in helping others start and grow new companies, create new innovation and spread wealth and jobs. Excellent. So uh, at this point, uh, the person who just walked in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, if you just if you're online, if you can mute your microphone just to be sure there's no feedback, that way you can hear what we're saying. Uh, all right. So next, uh, the founders, uh, startup founders. We've got five here. Oh yeah, Rebecca's gonna go first because she has she has an investor meeting. She's about okay. to get some money. So. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have them? Oh, if we bring them up here, then people yeah, can't back. see. Yeah. How about like right here? She can. She's there, the front of the so the camera can see them. <laughs> the camera okay. has to see them. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rebecca Scott. I'm the founder of Sustainable Snacks. We develop delicious plant-based grab-and-go snack products, starting with this line of chocolate superfood snacks. We also work to sustain the Bronx by creating jobs, making our products available at a reduced price point, and leading nutrition education programming in partnership with schools and CBOs. 
And Metabronx has been a great resource as I thought through how to build my mission-driven business infrastructure and think through funding strategies. And as I just mentioned, I now have an investor meeting. So it's great. Good, Good luck. <laughs> my apologies. Um, yeah. But thank you. Go get him. Good luck. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Marlon Jenkins. You'll probably hear from me later. Um, but I'm the founder and CEO of Netcher, which is a broadband delivery company that's based in the Bronx. Um, uh, beautifully enough, I've been involved in MetaBronx since its founding, probably before its founding. Um, but uh, fortunately enough, I've, I'm, I know almost well, maybe half the people in this room, um, and hopefully I know I'll learn many of you guys uh, at some point in the future, but um, I'm happy to be here, uh, and I'm obviously supportive of what the mission of the Bronx, I mean, I'm sorry, Meta Bronx does, Meta Bronx is my former nonprofit life, um, and uh, I look forward to getting involved even further. I'm happily and proud to be part of the first cohort, um, and Meta Bronx has been fantastic to me from the very beginning, um, and look forward to being supportive to many others in the future. Thank you. Uh, hey guys, my name is Julian Rodriguez. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Bazaar. So we help small businesses like restaurants, grocery stores, supermarkets get their wholesale goods. And so the South Bronx is sort of ground zero for wholesale distribution in New York City. Uh, I know half of the room here pretty intimately. I went to school with Andrew. Mm -hmm. um, I knew Miguel and Philip, um, as well as pretty much everyone here uh, for years now. And you know the the tech ecosystem in the Bronx has, you know, uh, been crucial in my ability to really start this startup, right? Um, I think a lot of people sort of underestimate sort of, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Mm. And um, that's very, very apparent for people who are trying to break into technology, uh, specifically from the Bronx. And so a lot of the efforts that come out of, you know, what we sort of nicknamed the Bronx Triangle, uh, tech triangle, uh, were crucial and really sort of, you know, providing a launch pad to where I am now. So, yeah, this is, um, I'm definitely uh, super excited uh, about this. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Sarah Poyer, and I'm the founder of The Glass Files. We build a software that enables individuals and groups of people to tell their stories and connect them to history. And we uh, work very closely with schools. Um, I would say that my partnership with Metabronx has helped me to discover that market because initially the product was built for uh, just families and we didn't realize that education was the place to start. Um, and then um, I've also participated in uh, developing the education part of um, what Metabronx does as a result. So I'm happy to be here and um, look forward to welcoming the next cohort of startups. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Andrew Kingsley. I'm the founder of Concourse Markets. And what Concourse Markets does, we help little community banks, specifically community development financial institutions, particularly credit unions, so cooperatively owned financial institutions, get together and fund a single loan. Uh, the reason this, this is important is because a lot of little institutions don't have enough money to make the loan by themselves, so we enable, you know, the pooling of capital um, amongst these little banks. Uh, my relationship to the Bronx, I'm the, clearly the white dude in the room, you know, <laughs> like, um, is, uh, you know, I got started about, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll you know. Their um, first. Yeah, <laughs> my relationship, I've been in the Bronx for about 10 years. I got my professional start uh, was at a credit union. Uh, I walked into a basement on 179th Street off Jerome Avenue, and there was a bunch of Latinas like making loans and <laughs> counting money. And uh, the conductor was 86 years old. <laughs> and Joy had been in the Bronx for, um, I don't know, 40 years. And I want to scale sort of the magic that was going on in, at Bethex. Uh, and you know, enable places like Bethex to make larger, more profitable loans. Well, huh? well, <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, so for the, the students, if you could just uh, say which school you're uh, you're attending. And your, oh. name, your name was. And your name, of course. Okay, I thought it was the same school. Uh, 
I'm Brian, Brian Gray from Bronx Academy for Software Engineering. I was, I'm a part of the first graduating class, so I'm alumni, and I was also got to go through that period of school where it was only us in the building, at least on our floor. Um, I represent the uh, more than majority of students and uh, who are unrepresented in their ideas and what they offer and bring to certain workplaces, workplaces and things like that. And uh, I'm also here to change the paradigm of uh, all perceptions on, you know, how we integrate and uh, facilitate and how we take part in all the systems that we already are a part of. Um, uh, yeah, I'm also here to learn. So I'm catching all the gems. Please <laughs> don't hesitate to drop them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was nicely put. <laughs> uh, my name is Kasma, and I'm a student at Bronx University Engineering. And I am an intern at Metabronx for, I mean, I've been working there for like almost two years now. I work as a software developer, I mean, in a software development team. So, yeah. I'm just taking photos. Yeah. Hey. Um, so, actually, uh, Terrence, uh, advisory board member, welcome. Uh, we just finished going around the entire room with intros, so I guess you're it. Okay, what are we covering? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> name, 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 and then your background, uh, you know, and if it's a mix of backgrounds, mention that it's a mix. It is a mix. I'm coming from a software engineering. Uh, Derek Lewis is also on the bridge as well. Oh, okay. okay. How come we can't see so You're next. 20 plus <laughs> years of software engineering, master's in computer science, teaching now math and computer science at the Bronx Academy for Software Engineering. Um, is there anyone else on the call that hasn't spoken other than Garrett? Is it Garrett? Derek. Derek. That's Derek. Derek. Oh, okay, Derek. <laughs> That's it, Garrett. Um, I guess, Derek, if you can um, tell the group who you are and your connection to MetaBronx and your background. Sure. Uh, Derek Lewis. I grew up in the South Bronx. I'm in Morris Heights, specifically. Um, I have been uh, involved in Meta Bronx and sort of been um, an admirer of Meta Bronx for a long time. Um, and by profession, I work in corporate strategy, uh, but I'm also uh, an angel investor and also an advisor to a few politicians um, at the federal and local level. Is there anyone else on the call that we haven't heard from? That's everybody. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So next step, well, next step actually is um, for Emily, if you can uh, hear us, to uh, take us through uh, the VilCap communities, uh, you know, the relationship between uh, Village Capital and VilCap communities and, and what that's trying to, to accomplish or what's all the stuff that's already been accomplished. So you can see that slide, that's your, you know, insane results slide. So go. Thanks. Great. Um, hi, everyone. Like I said, my name is Emily Edwards. Um, I'll start high level with Village Capital has been uh, training early stage entrepreneurs for 10 years. We have a small seed fund into which we invest the into which we invest in the companies that we essentially accelerate. Uh, we work in several different sectors around several different geographies. So we have a U.S. presence, but we also work in Latin America, India, and um, primarily East Africa. And we've been doing this for quite a while. Like I mentioned, 10 years. You can see trained over a thousand entrepreneurs. We've worked with um, in over 70 programs and um, all these numbers that are up on the screen right now come from a third party long term survey called Galley. It's the Global Accelerator Learning Initiative. They are out of Emory University. So we work really closely with them to make sure that we are really helping companies in the way that they need to be helped and that we think that we are helping them. Um, and after all this time, you know, we've got all these, as uh, Phil mentioned, great track record around the number of jobs created. We're really proud of the fact that we're able to help companies um, not just raise capital and, and earn revenue, but also create jobs. And um, if the slide's not in here, there's we have a lot of impact metrics around 
how many underserved students our companies serve or how many bank accounts were created thanks to startups that we've worked with um, or how many um, agricultural products were created through a sustainable lens through our program. So we've been doing this for a long time. We were quite happy with what we were doing. And the idea behind VILCAP communities came about three years ago when we were thinking about not just how village capital can democratize entrepreneurship. I won't go too into the nitty gritty about how we how we accelerate, how our programs work. Happy to go down a rabbit hole with anyone who's interested. Um, but we really wanted to look at village capital as as a nonprofit and as a sort of a global presence, how could we better support the local accelerators, incubators, universities, funds, governments, sort of a broad entrepreneurial support organization umbrella, uh, add another tool to their tool belt. So we started working closely with ESOs, um, again, around the world. We actually started with an initial 26, um, which was quite ambitious, but we started with 26 organizations around the world asking the question, what would happen if we gave our curriculum, our program management tools, our best practices, our track record to these organizations that, like Meta Bronx, have a very strong uh, community track record, have a very strong brand, have a lot of local connections and are clearly doing a lot of amazing work. And by adding this additional piece of programming or pieces of programming to their current portfolio, how could we help them accelerate their companies even more? And that's really where this idea came from. And we've been building on it since about 20, about 2016. Um, it's taken on a lot of different iterations. And the most recent iteration is to uh, work much more closely between the internal programs that Village Capital runs. So we'll actually be in New York uh, twice, once in November, once in December, running uh, sector specific programming. Uh, we, when we run programs, we tend to travel around to different cities. So none of our entrepreneurs are from Actually, two are from New York. I, I take that back. But most of the time, we find entrepreneurs from uh, overlooked places of overlooked demographics who are solving problems that, honestly, not that many people are investing in and move them around to places like New York or Chicago or uh, we were in Miami last week nothing to complain about there and introduce them directly to investors or mentors who can help them uh, accelerate their businesses even more. And the dual nature of this, I think, is really exciting and, and why Metabronx is such a great partner to work with is Village Capital as a everywhere and nowhere type of presence. We, we really want to make sure that the entrepreneurs we're serving are being met where they are. Um, they are getting the type of capital that they need. We, we don't follow necessarily just an equity only focus. We help companies think through what type of funding they should be looking for um, from what type of investors. Very few companies ever will become unicorns. So why try and push everyone into some idea of what success looks like for startups? Um, and the idea with working with Metabronx and um, other organizations in their cohort through this grant with Travelers Insurance is to be able to make our curriculum, program management tools, all these pieces that we've developed over 10 years free to organizations that we think can really, really run with it. Um, I don't know if there's another, maybe one more slide about map but about there's this slide are. that just shows your world domination. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, and you know, to be very, open and transparent, the idea with communities is not to create little Vilcap hubs or to create franchises of us everywhere. In fact, um, I'm very thankful to be brought in on this conversation as, a, as an advisory board member, but oftentimes Village Capital takes a much further backseat and we aren't often mentioned in sort of the branding that our organizations follow. And that's really because it's not about our quote world domination we really want to make sure that what we're providing is um accessible and i'm able to learn as much from the metabronx team about what's working in their particular programs as i am able to facilitate to them as a best practice so this idea of a round table for instance comes from a village capital um method of getting the advisory board involved and starting to talk about what the program we're all building together is, but I would, Village Capital would never know 
how best to get all of you in the room and even what the needs were to get you all in the room in the first place. So um, I think that I, <laughs> world domination is a, a, a term to use, but I, I think where we really have a great partnership is to work with travelers insurance who are particularly interested in making sure they're able to also through their corporate th philanthropy or through different um, channels of innovation that they work in are also understanding the needs of very early stage startups um, from a risk perspective and an insurance perspective. But um, for me and for us, I think it's just, it's a fun time to really experiment and say, this is, this is the village capital standard. This is how we follow it. Now, here it is. Uh, you tell me what's going to work. And we sit and sort of tinker around with um, what sessions they should be doing or what, what's the best, um, program design or, or what type of entrepreneurs to work with. My background, as I mentioned, is in finance. So we go at it with the lens of, are these companies going to be both a great growth opportunity? Are they going to grow sustainably and uh, generate revenue over time? And are they also a, a good investment for an investor? Um, obviously, uh, are they a, something that will make a return over time? Are they something that's going to grow? Um, and I think that, I'll stop talking at that point and see if there's, uh, Phil, if there's anything else you want me to touch on or um, dig into, I'm happy. I no, that's it. Thank thing. you so much for uh, <laughs> okay. all that information. It's much Thank easier. You. Yeah. Um, and in fact, we, the way we found uh, uh, the Finnish Capital, we found out about it, is an ecosystem story. So the way, they, so of course it's about startups. It's about finding founders and entrepreneurs with great ideas. but. This idea of building an ecosystem where you start connecting the pieces uh, in a place like the Bronx uh, is is really as much what this is what this is about. So you know, literally. So the story of, of how we even came in contact with Village Capital is an ecosystem story. Marlon, as he stated, was the first entrepreneur I ever worked with in the Bronx, um, and after he took our our curriculum and we worked with him for a while, he went off into his own world and. Tell the story. So um, I don't know if I explained this earlier, but what my company does is we provide um, internet access to underserved communities. That's what our pitch is. That's what our, our service is. Um, and the reason it's funny you mentioned earlier, Emily, um, you know that oftentimes many founders who look like me, um, who specifically serve demographics like I do, are, are typically ignored. Um, so I very quickly, very funny story is um, Miguel and I went to an event. I don't know, four years ago, and we met with this angel investor, and the angel investor basically told me straight up, why are you investing in that community? No one cares about the demographic. Um, so that lets, that gives you a perspective of what we have to deal with, right? If you want to solve a problem that is typically unsolved, um, and you look like us, and you cater to people who look like us, then, you know, you're going to get these types of responses. So the beautiful thing about Metabronx um, and why this ecosystem is important is I – you know, for, um, Miguel was with me, and this is early in my um, kind of, you know, figuring out what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. Um, he was there to support me to figure out okay, alternative met methods of, of how to pr proceed forward. Beautifully enough, going through the MetaBranch process, um, I was actually involved, and this is how I became familiar with Village Capital. I was accepted into something called the Civic X Accelerator, um, which is a national accelerator that um, specifically focusing on social ventures. Um, and going through that process, I became exposed to Village Capital, um, and Afterwards, um, we received, I received, you know, I get a bunch of different emails from different organizations, and I received an organization, um, an email specifically talking about VillCap communities. So what I did was, as a, I used to be a grant writer in my previous life, my nonprofit life, um, so what I did was I passed it on to, to these guys and said, listen, you guys got to do this. I think this fits. I read through it. I said, it fits everything you guys are talking about. You got to go for it. And beautifully enough, they ran with it. So right when he said that I had just finished the book, the innovation blind spot. It was it was incredible the timing, and I had been telling Philip. I actually highly recommend this book. Everybody read it. Um, I had been telling Philip that we could have wrote this book. Like this book was literally all of our late night conversations about what needs to happen. And Marlon, an entrepreneur, connected with them because we were trying to figure out how to connect with them. And <clears throat> we entered. And in our training, Emily actually told us that we were the only ecosystem that applied that they didn't know about before their application process. And we won because we were so aligned with their mission. And I believe we had been like on this path for so long and it just 
perfect timing. So again, this kind of proves how the ecosystem can grow and can can keep on evolving. The multiplier effect, they see. Um, so yeah, we're looking for startups. Um, you? Me. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our problem statement that we are building our whole cohort around is. We're looking for startups that are owned and operated by founders who usually lack access to the resources and networks required to build their companies. Usually cohorts are a little more specific, but because we want to make sure we don't miss out on anything huge, we want to make sure that we're just targeting people who are usually not targeted, right? So um, our, our cohort is based just around people trying to grow an idea from communities that normally are overlooked. And the Village Capital curriculum, once we find these companies, the cool thing about what Village Capital has provided to us is there's a whole, it's called Abaca system, that most investors, when they look at a startup, they don't really voice every reason that they don't invest in the company. What, what, what the, yeah, like most of our founders know. So what the Abaca system teaches and it will allow us to teach our founders is the key areas investors look for and how to look better to investors in that process. So the first part is team. Um, that is a huge problem in communities of color where there's not a lot of co-founders. There's usually a lot of solopreneurs. So we have to figure out how to help founders get better um, access just in that one alone. Then there's problem and vision, value proposition, the product, market, business model, scale, <laughs> and investor exit. So our, the curriculum that Village Capital has given us will allow us to push entrepreneurs and, and companies up these levels of investability. Yeah. I want to mention that if you are squinting on the on the hangout or or questions about uh, what this looks like, this is a free resource for um, any entrepreneur who wants to get a sense of where they're fitting in and and where they may be needing to focus some of their uh, time and particularly uh, capital on. It's also a free resource for. Um, support organizations that are just looking to start getting connected with entrepreneurs. So even folks in the room who are getting a sense of um, how they can get connected, um, not just to this program, but as you're building this programmatic ecosystem, um, would love everyone to get uh, any, send me any feedback or have any questions about this, please let me know. And a lot of our, our programming, the way it's structured is, uh, we don't focus on things like, um, the the MVP of how to how to build your first product. We're not software engineers. We also don't focus necessarily on um, the very very early stages of uh, the technical side of of legal. I love that there are so many lawyers here. We don't focus very much on legal. But what we do aim to help startups with is to think through uh, the early milestones that they would need to hit to to secure investment or at least to excite an investor. And if they are unable to secure some type of funding, having uh, a conversation between investors and startups to say, I'm not ready to invest in you because I need to see these three things happen first. And if you come back in six months and you have secured uh, a major partnership, if you've been able to test out um, your large partnerships, if you're able to um, secure evidence that you have are solving a customer's problem, then we can sort of pick this back up. So it's it's not meant to be a full diagnosis. It's not meant to be a full roadmap. I hear all the time that founders think that it's um, not 100% there for them, which is fine, but it is meant to be an early conversation. And the curriculum that we provide is also around um, building a team for scale or building a product for scale. So um, thinking beyond the immediate, who do I need to hire to solve my current problems, but thinking about risks long term, um, what are the areas in which that you need to be thinking about even from the earliest stage. So you'll notice that investor exit and scale, even a company that we would call like a level one company needs to think through. Um, we want to prompt all of our entrepreneurs to even start 
understanding what those options look like before they get too far down the line and think I have no no exit strategy I have no um, I have no plans here so again happy to fall down a rabbit hole with anyone but I just wanted to highlight that as well thank you for that Can I ask a question one second we mm -hmm. feedback will be right after this oh, okay. um, so Emily Emily uh, brings up a, a great point a lot of lawyers in the room uh, one of the reasons why we've, we've created this advisory um, round table is as being one of the first technologists in the Bronx to have a lot of startups come at me I recognize the two major holes in a community like I come from are financial and legal understanding especially when it comes to high growth startups so when we composed this group we made sure they were lawyers and finance people because that's one of the biggest places where people are going to need help and that's where this curriculum we're going to call on a lot of you during these curriculums based on your skill sets right so if there's a startup that really has a hole in a specific area that you are good in we're going to hope that we can connect them with you and they can be helped to move up these levels yes and in fact uh, the total number of, of advisors as of today is 40 so I think maybe today there's maybe 15 to 20, a bunch of people are traveling, of course, mid-November, mid-October. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's a really good group. Um, try to make it as diverse as possible, of course. Uh, but yeah, the finance and legal, well represented, um, very, very important. Uh, so the schedule for this, um, November 18th, which is in you know, a uh, little under a month is the application deadline for the startups. Uh, then there's going to be a review period we will most likely call on you, uh, especially if uh, there's a match in terms of uh, industry knowledge, um, and uh, make a decision by December 5th, December 6th, uh, send, out, uh, send out the decisions. We're going to accept five startups. Officially, we usually get a sixth one. That's usually how it works. We say we accept five, but then we accept six. Um, and uh, then January 14th is going to be the kickoff day for the cohort at Meta Bronx uh, in Mott Haven. Uh, January, that's January 14th. It's a Tuesday, just like today. Uh, there, there you will uh, you do the so uh, to, there's the advisory board, and there's a, a wider mentor network. There's there's another. 100 or 150 people we've interacted with over the years, uh, you were essentially hand-picked from uh, that group, uh, but people who have more like industry-specific knowledge. Uh, so we'll have a big event on January 14th. You'll meet the startups. It'll be the first day. Then the actual startup uh, mentorship commences. So ideally, uh, advisors uh, sort of uh, pair with startups that they like, founders that they like. Uh, or bring uh, expertise to all the startups, um, especially for the legal component. Uh, we're going to be running workshops. Uh, and we, So this is not entirely completely figured out, exactly the dates of these workshops. We're going to get that done uh, as the uh, 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 startups apply. Uh, and we'll, of course, communicate that to all of you. Um, and then June 9, uh, presentation day at Google, it, it, has to be confirmed that it will be at Google, but presumably it will be at Google. And that will probably be a pretty big event. So uh, that, you know, sort of as open as possible to the to the community and the public, uh, just because Google is such a, you know, spaceship sort of place. Um, and yeah, so that that's the um, that's the schedule. Uh, just want to say and uh, a quick word on fundraising. <laughs> fun stuff. Uh, Metabronx is a 501c3 corporation, state of New York, and normally the way these things work, uh, we raise money for the cohort. And then a recap, and then after that it will be, <laughs> be open. Uh, re the five practical things that you can do really to, uh, to, to move the process along. So promote the application uh, on Twitter and LinkedIn or any of, you know, whatever your sort of favorite social media platform is. Um, refer the startup to the application, which is more of a word of mouth thing. So if you have access to startups, if you know startups, if you meet startups, uh, it would be wonderful to direct them to metabronx.com slash apply. And, and one of the key ways of pushing them there is 
this is an accelerator program that doesn't take equity. That's really tough to find, and um, that's a benefit to them. Right. Um, and connect uh, in the requirements. So, solution to the problem you are solving is technology based or tech enabled, or you're a master in your industry and you're techifying a process, which is an important part uh, of of uh, the entrepreneurs we speak with. Uh, and then you can you have to be able to attend events, work sessions, and meetings at the Metabronx workspace, which would presumably be at least six. Uh, so there's a geographical proximity component. And then the schedule is on here as well. So uh, the the so refer startups. Uh, press coverage. Press coverage is incredibly valuable, uh, in both in terms of attracting startups and funders. Uh, so if you have good relationships with uh, with anyone uh, in publications. Uh, definitely let us know. And then refer mentors, advisors, and investors. I mean, that, you know, if, if you yourself are an advisor, or uh, uh, then you're in, in a way in the best position uh, to identify other people who can participate. Because the wider that network is, the better. The more industries are involved, the better. Uh, and finally, of course, refer program funding partners, if you know any. Uh, again, fundraising, always an important part of. Uh, of, of building up to uh, January 14th. So, Sharvi, one of the students, uh, you want to tell everyone uh, who you are, what school you are attending? Uh, hi, good afternoon. My name is Sharvi Rivas. I'm attending the first community college. Oh, very nice. Good. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, awesome. thanks for making this happen. Thank all right. You.